Might be the first time my head's a little above the camera. I feel tall. All right, questions for Pat? Yeah. Eric Woodyard? Hey, what's up, Pat? How you doing, man? What's up, guys? How's it going? Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Can Pat, you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. I think the two people talking. <laughs> no, I was just talking about I was here at the job for the game. Oh, we'll come back to Eric. Uh, Eric, name, go ahead. Pat, I'm, I'm curious for you. I know you have all of the, the threes tonight, but it feels like the play that sticks out is that block where you go up and, and get the guy at the summit. Just what does it feel like to be able to contribute defensively? And is that the play that sticks out to you as well from tonight? Yeah, definitely. I would say that one and honestly uh, the one on Terrence Ross late in the game when they were trying to run an ATL for him. I think uh, that defensive side of the ball impact that you know myself but really everybody on the team had tonight um, hold them to 13 points in the first quarter hold them under 100 uh, you know those are the things that we have to do uh, especially in playoff basketball but that's you know what Bucks basketball is and so uh, that's what myself and I think all the guys are, are most proud of from the game tonight. Matt Velasquez. You know, Pat right before the half you guys are up by you know, 19 points, get that rebound with about six seconds left. You could have just dribbled it out. Instead, you continue pushing and get that dunk for Giannis. Just how emblematic do you think that is of the night in general for you guys? You just kind of kept pushing. Uh, you know, huge. I think it's the momentum plays. It's the things that, you know, the bench mob kind of prides itself on. And obviously, the starters do really well. And uh, I mean, if the biggest thing I remember from that play was Kyle was underneath pushing and shoving on Vucevic. If he doesn't get that hit, I'm not able to, you know, come down from the top side and grab the rebound and go over the top of him. And then, you know, we're not able to push it down. And Wesley Matthews ran the floor really hard. He was yelling my name on the wing. I jumped up, kind of gave a look at him through the, out of the corner of my eye, which, you know, made the defenders go with him. And Giannis was wired open under the basket. And I think, you know, that there's four guys right there that uh, contributed to that play happening, which, you know, the average fan may not see on TV, but those are the things that we pride ourselves on, having each other's backs and making plays so that other guys on our team, uh, you know, can, can dunk the ball. Malika Andrews? Pat, you and Brooke seem to feed off of each other quite a bit tonight. What, what have you seen from him? You know, when uh, Brooke Lopez is our anchor on defense, I think sometimes, honestly, uh, you know, as guards, we need to do a better job to help him out because of the amount he helps us out. And, uh, you know, he's always, obviously, uh, since he's been here, been a great shooter. Um, when he's hitting shots, it, it, it makes us really hard to guard. But, uh, you know, he's a guy that can do so much on both ends of the floor that, uh, you know, when he's into it, when he gets intense, uh, you know, when he does, uh, gets vocal to the team, maybe to guys in stripes sometimes, like, it gets us fired up because, uh, you know, he's, really into the game and he really has an impact. Lance Allen. Hey Pat, you mentioned it, you know, only 13 first quarter points for the Magic. I don't think they made back to back shots until like the midpoint of the second quarter. So it's a little bit noticeable that it was early intensity. Is that just energy from you guys because you're professional? Is it the coaches getting on you guys saying we are better than this? What was it for you guys right off the bat? You know, I'd say a mixture of both. Uh, you know, the coaching staff demanded more out of us. We demanded more out of ourselves. And at the end of the day, uh, you know, we're going to get everyone's best shot, and especially in the playoffs. And, you know, it's a little bit of a different mentality. Last year we had that chip on our shoulder because nobody believed in us, even when we were the one seed. This year, uh, you know, according to the outside world, we're favorites. But we need to bring ourselves back to that chip on our shoulder mentality where, uh, you know, it's us 16 guys in that locker room. It's our coaching staff. It's our, you know, equipment guys. It's our uh, front office. It's whomever is here with us, the, you know, 30 some odd people that we have. Um, and we have to have each other's backs and we have to make sure that we do it with the chip on our shoulder that we, you know, really started this culture on uh, at the beginning of last season. Steve McGargy. Just in that vein, what was said amongst yourselves after game one, just how, just how different was the intensity level maybe leading up to this game compared to leading up to game one, or did you notice a difference in that regard? Uh, you know, I, I would say it's similar to 
game one, round two versus Celtics last year. Uh, you know, we didn't play well. Uh, we were obviously disappointed in ourselves. Coaches uh, were disappointed in us. You know, we, we had a, a film session that, that we needed to have. You know, we needed to look at ourselves in the mirror and understand, like, can we say, you know, Vucevic played phenomenal in game one and they had guys that hit shots? Yeah, we can say that. But at the end of the day, you know, it's on us to make them more uncomfortable to play the defensive brand of basketball that we've built here over the last two, two and a half years. Um, and when we take that look in the mirror, it's how we respond. And I think that's what's made us great over the last few years is we respond uh, to losses really well. Now, obviously, we'd prefer not to have them, but, um, you know, when they do happen, we want to make sure that uh, we respond the following game and we continue to respond, uh, you know, game after game after game, but taking it one game at a time. Kane Pittman. Happy, bir happy birthday, Kane. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for the message. You, uh, you, didn't, you took too much time doing that, but I appreciate it. <laughs> I was very excited. Hey, if you were going to uh, mention anything from uh, the defensive side that Bud maybe would be happy about, it. maybe it's the free throw attempts. They're 31 on the game, 21 in the first half. What do you put that down to? I mean, you guys were super aggressive. You were clearly fired up. Is it, is it maybe being too aggressive where the foul call's a little bit too touchy? What did you see with the Magic being able to get to the line so often? You know, um, it's one of those things where we would love to not foul that much. And an emphasis at the beginning of the season was to try to defend without fouling. Uh, on the contrary of that, I think last game in game one, uh, we were a little bit too cautious, uh, If is probably the, the word I would use. and. If we're going to defend aggressively, if we're going to get fouls going after it uh, and making sure that they know that we're here, that we're on the defensive side of the ball and we're going to meet them at the rim, we're going to meet them above the three-point line, we're going to be up in them all night, then uh, you know, I think we're okay with it. Now, obviously, that's the next step, making sure we do it without fouling. Um, but of course, uh, as far as tonight goes, I think it was important for us to error on the side of being more aggressive and getting a few more fouls than uh, what we did in game one. Uh, Ferdinand Rivera. Hey, Pat, um, how this victory helps the confidence of the team? Uh, you know, it's huge. Uh, uh, for us, um, it was just about playing the way that we play. Uh, I think, you know, uh, we haven't really felt like we uh, played our Bucks brand of basketball um, as much as we should and could um, since we've been down here. And I think that was the main focus coming into game two was play our brand of basketball, especially on the defensive end. And let's start to, you know, be the Milwaukee Bucks that, uh, you know, our fans, our team and, and, you know, the NBA has kind of started to see over the last few years. Hi, Eric Dave. I know going into this series, I was curious about you know, Vlad going under on Mark Elfolds and kind of how that might affect the intensity. What do you think when you saw Bledsoe in his shorts out of the half court tonight from the opening 10? You know, I thought it was great. Uh, you know, I, I, I'll, you'll never, uh, you know, be able to hear me say enough great things about Eric Bledsoe. You know, I think uh, the way he plays the game is phenomenal. I think, you know, the way he defends, the way he attacks when he's in attack mode, uh, you know, just him as a human being uh, is, uh, you know, one of my favorite guys on the team. And uh, it's incredible what he does, especially on the defensive side of the ball. I mean, look, I, I'm a guy that uh, I, I have some athleticism, I think, and I can defend pretty well, and I can chase guys over screens, try to sneak under them, but uh, Bled just does it. And, and he doesn't always do it the way that, you know, you, you teach it. He doesn't always look at the angles. He's just so freaking good and so athletic that when he puts his mind to it, um, you know, a guy's in for a long night. And, and when he's up in him, when he's doing things that Eric Bledsoe does, the Eric Bledsoe defense, uh, if you want to call it, um, you know, we are that much better. And, and he is, you know, a first team, all defense caliber player. Uh, last one to Zora. Pat, as you all work to get back to that Bucks brand of basketball publicly, Coach Bud never lost confidence in you all. The players felt like, hey, like we can get back to it, never lost confidence. Why do you think that is, that you all never have a sense of worry? Uh, it's, it's how we built uh, the culture over the last few years. Um, you know, 
we've always had confidence in each other. We've always had each other's backs within the locker room, um, and we will continue to do that. We all believe in each other. We believe in the guy next to us, and we do things for the guys next to us. Uh, I think that's uh, one of the reasons we've been able to have so much success to date is um, – it's it's a different feel than um, you know you can get uh, on certain teams around the NBA. It's a family type feel. Like I want to play well, not because I want to personally play well. I want to play well because the guys next to me are depending on me, and I I want to make sure that I put, help put my team and do things for my teammates to put us in the best position to win. And uh, when you have that across the board, uh, you know, you're able to push yourself a little bit harder, a little bit faster, a little bit stronger, defend a little bit longer, um, you know, things of that nature. And I think that's what makes this team special. That's what makes this organization special. And that's why, you know, we knew it was there and we wanted to just make sure that, uh, you know, we brought it back and we continue to bring it back night in and night out. Uh, because at the end of the day, that consistency uh, is what's going to help put us in a position to achieve, you know, kind of what we want to achieve. Great. Thank you, Pat. No problem. Thank you, guys.